This is like take five. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rachel Reisner uh, from Cats and Hamsters. I'm a certified professional pet sitter in Montreal, Canada. I'm here to talk to you about hamster bin cages. So a common issue with hamster owners is getting an appropriate cage for them. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to find a good hamster cage in a pet store because to my knowledge, there's only maybe two um, that are available in pet stores or online commercially that are appropriately sized for a hamster. Unfortunately, a lot of the um, hamster cages, almost all, I'd say 90, 95% of hamster cages that you see in pet stores are just too small and they're very impractical. I see a lot of hamster cages as a professional pet sitter. I specialize in cats and small caged animals, particularly with hamsters, so I do see a lot of hamster cages. And um, I have a, um, I don't know, it's, it's tough because if I'm caring for a hamster in my home, it is convenient to have a small travel-sized hamster cage with or without tubes, but um, it's just too small to humanely house a hamster long-term. Some issues I've found with the um, commercial hamster cages that have all the tubes, usually brightly colored plastic, they look futuristic, they look really pretty, but there's a lot of issues with them. Um, why I, I wouldn't recommend getting them. Some issues, particularly with those tube modular hamster cages, are that the tubes leak. So oftentimes the hamster will pee in the tubes and then the pee goes outside of the tube and onto your furniture or whatever else you have underneath that hamster cage. Sometimes you see the wheels on the outside of the cage. And again, hamsters usually pee as they're running on the wheel and poop. So then you have that leaking through the wheel and getting flung around the general area of the hamster bin, of uh, the hamster cage. They're a pain to clean because you have to disassemble the whole um, structure, clean inside the tubes. Sometimes the tubes don't um, come open. Usually the tubes will break in half and then you clean the inside and then put them back together again, but sometimes they don't. <laughs> and then that makes it more difficult to clean. And, but not only that, but after cleaning, you have to dry them very well because you can't put a damp hamster cage um, and get that back to the hamster. You have to dry everything very well, otherwise it, it could um, be bad for the hamster. Um, and also the uh, those plastic tubes, while they do market um, them and say that you can build these giant um, hamster tunnels all throughout your entire home um, and make these elaborate structures, almost like you're building a Lego castle. But the issue is that the um, oftentimes they're just not structurally sound. So the weight of those tubes, if you have a lot of tubes, even if you have just a couple tubes, sometimes you'll, you'll see that at the connector, it'll sort of, um, the weight is pulling the connector and it's very difficult to um, make sure that there's a good seal between the two connectors so that you're worried that the hamster cage is gonna break apart. I've had Syrian hamsters myself who have literally broken out of their little plastic um, tubular cages multiple times. So that was actually when I myself switched to um, bin cages because I had just a really mighty Syrian hamster whose name was Buffy. Buffy the vampire slayer, but Buffy the black bear hamster who was able to literally break out of the, um, and not just like pry open the door, we're talking like break open the tubes. So that's an issue because Syrian hamsters are surprisingly strong. And um, so there's just all these, um, these issues with the tubular cages and actually, um, yeah. So um, I, I, I I wouldn't recommend them as the hamster's permanent home. I mean, they do make decent travel cages, say if you're moving and you need to transport your hamster long distance um, with you in the car, then sure, that's fine. But day in and day out for years, 
Um, they're just too small to be in the hands of hamster. Hamsters generally run several miles in the wild. So to just expect them to go from their little tiny house to the wheel and run on the wheel for like five miles and then go straight back to the house again is inhumane. It's just, I mean, the hamster, it's a living creature. The hamsters get bored. It's just putting them into a tiny little prison cell because their cage is too small. And what you see is that in addition to all this inconvenience of like the cleaning and maintaining the cage, which may or may not hold together, is that you'll often see um, behavioral issues with the hamster. Cage aggression, the hamster will constantly gnaw on the um, cage bars. Of course, you know, hamsters will sometimes gnaw just anyway, because hamsters chew. But um, I mean, you may see just a frantic, frenetic, um, unhealthy, obsession with digging in the corners and like just trying to get out all night. Like chewing the, um, destroying the cage because it's too small for them and they're unhappy. So you'll see things like that. So your hamster may just destroy your beautiful little um, inhuman sized um, commercially bought uh, tank, and then you'll just have to buy another one or switch to a DIY bin cage, which I would recommend first off. I mean, one thing is um, with bin cages, they're actually easier to clean because oftentimes um, you just take all the toys out, scoop out all the um, substrate, the shavings or the, um, uh, the um, uh, paper bedding or whatever it is, clean it, scrub it down, dry it, and then put everything back. Um, so you don't have to disassemble lots of little pieces or remember how they go back. Um, and also it's in a bin. So as long as you are aware of where you place the hamster's toys so that it's not easy for them to climb out, then they're secure in there. It's not like they're going to break out unless, um, I guess, depending on what um, what bin you use, maybe they'll be able to chew their way out, but if the sides are smooth, then they shouldn't be able to do that. I like bin cages because, um, it gives you a way to, it's really great at customizing your own hamster cage. Say you want to add, um, a wheel and a spinning, um, what are they called? Spinning tops, the disc, the flying disc and a flying disc and maybe some like climbing structures and like a bridge and a house and things. You can do that because you can do whatever you want to a bin cage. But if you're buying a commercial cage, it's often difficult to customize it because you're just buying this prefabricated hamster cage that looks pretty on the outside, but it's just too small. And um, so I guess going back to cage size is that there are um, minimum cage size recommendations they range roughly from 450 square inches, which is roughly the size of a 40 gallon breeder tank. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, it's just this is like the fifth day I've done of this, so I, I may be repeating myself, um, to um, about 600 square inches. Bigger is always better with hamsters. Hamsters um, in the wild will run several miles, so I mean, they're never going to be unhappy with being large size. You could have like a bedroom sized hamster cage and then a hamster would be perfectly fine with that. And the surprising thing is that, um, oh yeah. And so what I was talking about is that with the um, commercial hamster cages, especially the ones with the tubes that connect with each other, the tubes do not count towards the cage size because it's not like the hamster has freedom to run around um, and explore. The tube is just confining. It's, it doesn't count towards the cage size. It's just, extra stuff. So you have to just count the, um, the main size of the hamster tank. Okay, so um, the purpose of this video wasn't so much to bash commercial um, pet store hamster cages, although I guess it kind of was because this is just a, it's a common known problem that all hamster enthusiasts um, grasp um, at one point or another in their time as hamster owners that um, buying hamster cage is very difficult. There's only one or two that I know of um, that are 
um, commercial hamster cages that are an appropriate size for a hamster. But today I'm here to talk about um, DIY bin cages because I have one of my clients bin cages here with a hamster about to go back home and I was very impressed with it and I really wanted to share how wonderful it is <laughs> so that it would inspire other people to make their own wonderful bin cages for their hamsters. Now, I think a common misconception about bin cages um, or DIY cages, do-it-yourself cages uh, for hamsters is that um, like they're cheapo or they're ugly and you can basically make it as great and as luxurious as you want. And one um, inspirational hamster YouTuber that um, I used to follow, but I think she's taking a break from posting hamster videos is Hoppin Hamster, Hoppin Hammy. I post a link to her um, vlog in the comments. Um, but she has these um, magnificent DIY hamster enclosures that she made and she does all these themes that she changes up and like different colored bedding and just this total hamster wonderland that is just an inspiration to us all, although not all of us can aspire to greatness like that. But um, <laughs> like, anyway, I wanted to show um, this great example of a really great hamster bin cage. Do it yourself, I was very impressed. And even these owners told me that they are first time hamster owners, although they've had pets in the past. Um, so they are experienced pet owners, but this was their first time with hamsters. But I was very impressed that they clearly took the time to carefully research hamster husbandry and hamster needs and to get an appropriate enclosure and habitat for their hamster and diet too, because they feed them very good hamster food. But um, I wanted to share so that, um, you know, other people could see how wonderful it is. So um, I guess I'll show you. It's a Syrian hamster and they have, so first of all, this bin cage is great because it's huge. So this clearly meets the minimum cage um, size recommendations of, um, you know, I should know what the size is, but I can just tell by looking at it that it's clearly more than 450 um, square inches. I think it actually might be 600 square inches, maybe even more than that. And the great thing about um, these DIY bin cages is that they're very easy to pick up and move around because you don't have to worry about parts falling off because it's all contained. Um, and with plastic, um, I mean, because glass, um, glass fish tanks tend to be heavy, but plastic is not that heavy, even if you put a lot of toys and things in there. So, I mean, there's great. What I really like what they did is on the top is I think it's good to have a um, lid on your hamster cage, unless maybe if you're child free and you don't have any other pets, then maybe you don't need a lid. But I think having a lid is good. If you have pets or children, you know, it just helps keep everything safer. And what they did was that they cut out um, the top of this um, tote, plastic tote, and then they drilled some holes on the side and they put, uh, they told me it's a um, ceiling light cover and um, zip ties, which are like rainbow colored. And what I used to do when I had my own um, DIY bin cage, um, I use a glass uh, fish tank right now, um, but I would uh, get a big, the biggest plastic bin that I could afford. <laughs> and then I would take it to Home Depot and kind of beg the um, very nice customer service people there to drill holes in it for me for the hamster to breathe out of. And they always did. They were always very nice. And they would take their power drills and would drill holes into all the sides. And um, I, I don't think I used a lid then because I didn't have, no, I must have, because I had, no, no, I didn't use it. Yeah, <laughs> it was a long, long, long time ago. But anyway, um, but they, I had them drill holes on the sides. And actually, I wouldn't necessarily recommend drilling holes on the sides because 
Um, I had them do it a few, a few different times for different hamsters at different times of my life. And I found that the, um, the plastic on the sides of the bin aren't usually as strong as the ones on the lid. So sometimes you would get cracking. And also, um, I mean, you never want to have the thing about these um, plastic totes is that they're nice and smooth and non-stick on the inside. But if you have a hole that's drilled into it, then the hamster is going to be able to fit their little teeth in there and then make the hole bigger so that they can come out. So that's why I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting holes on the sides of the bin, but having um, this nice open thing on the top is great. Generally, I've seen a lot of other DIY hamster cages before, and usually people use like um, chicken wire on the inside, which works as well. But I just like this, I mean, the way they did it is just very um, strong, such structurally sound, and it's easy to clean as well. I feel like this is, I haven't tested it, of course, but I feel like it's strong enough for like a cat to sit on it, which is awesome. So, because, I mean, one consideration you need to have when you have a hamster cage and hamster accessories is are you, is it practical? Are you going to be able to clean it and make sure that it lasts? Because if you're spending money on accessories or time on drilling holes and um, making structures, you want it to last. You don't want it to just break after a few washes or like, you know. So, um, okay. And another thing that I loved about their cage was their big um, hamster wheel. This is a nine and a half inch Crebu, what is it called? Preview Quiet Wheel, which um, looks amazing. I'm actually looking for a new hamster wheel for my own hamster, um, but I don't think I'll get the nine and a half inches because he's a dwarf hamster, but their hamster is a Syrian hamster. So nine and a half inches is, um, I think is fine. The main thing about hamster wheels is you want to make sure that the hamster's back isn't going to be totally like bent in half. Um, oftentimes with the commercial hamster cages, the hamster wheels are just too small for a Syrian hamster. You may be able to fit a dwarf hamster in the wheel, um, but a Syrian hamster is bigger, <laughs> a lot bigger. <laughs> um, and usually what happens is say if they've got like a little six inch wheel or whatever comes with the commercial hamster cage, the poor hamster's back is completely um, like a U-shape, which is very unhealthy for the hamster. It can lead to health issues, and it's just not very humane to have them run like that, but they don't have anywhere else to run because there's no other space for anything else for them to run on. So um, it's very important to have an appropriate sized um, wheel for your hamster um, or flying disc, but I think... Um, Anyway, we'll, we're talking about their cage right now, and then we can talk about other issues in other videos. I also like, I'm just kind of fangirling about their cage because it's, I, I, they did it so well. So I just want to share how wonderful it is. So another thing they did is they, I don't know if you can see, yeah, is they put heavy duty Velcro to the edge, um, to the wall of the cage, and also on the water bottle. So that all you have to do is just stick it and, you know, so you don't have to fiddle with um, bottles. There's other ways to do um, hamster bottles and stuff, but I like this, that I think they did a really good job because um, you can easily take out the hamster bottle, wash it, and um, put it back on there. Um, some other things that I liked was that um, this, I think this is a water pipe thing, but this is like from a hardware store. And I was actually just at the hardware store the other day and things like this are probably roughly $4 or so, um, four or $5. Um, so it's like, you've got a very effective hamster toy that is solid, very durable. And also like food safe because it's meant to um, be used with human drinking water. So this I think was a very good um, decision for them. I also, I, I'm just trying to check if the hamster's in the house. No, okay, the hamster's not in the house. because <laughs> so I, I washed this all earlier, the hamster liked being in this house, but now it's moved to a different um, hide. 
But um, so this has I actually I have this one myself, but I I don't use it <laughs> because it's funny because as a pet sitter I wash everything by hand and you know I wash whatever they have. Um, but as a hamster, as a pet owner, I don't really like washing a lot of stuff by hand. So for my own hamster, I sometimes just use save little cardboard boxes and things and cut out holes for them, which is actually what the client did. Um, okay, the hamster's in there, but I'm gonna just very, very briefly show you that they used a, um, okay, sorry, dude, sorry, is um, they um, took a small box and they cut holes into it and holes on the top too for um, airflow and the hamster loves it and uses it as a hide. Um, this as a hide is fine too. I, I like that it opens so that you can wash the inside. Oftentimes hamsters will pee and poop um, a lot in their hides or their little houses. So it's important that the um, hide can open so that you can clean it really well. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of cleaning hides, so that's why I don't use, I had the exact same one, but I um, don't use it myself, but I mean, it's fine. It's very well made and um, the hamster likes it. So that's good. Um, they also have like these, um, you know, extra paper rolls and paper, um, uh, toilet paper rolls and things with like holes cut out of it, which I think is clever. The hamster likes running in and out of it. Although the hamster's young. I think when the hamster gets a little bit bigger because the hamster isn't quite fully grown yet, I'm not sure if he's going to fit into the whole one, but um, things like this are great because they're free. Um, so they don't cost you a lot. Hamsters chew, so they often destroy toys. So you don't want to invest in very expensive hamster toys. You want them to be practical and um, useful. You know, uh, I guess it just depends on what your budget is. But um, with most rodents, because they're just constantly chewing, you don't really want to have like, you know, super expensive toys because they may destroy it within a few days. This is a common um, toy I see. I have one myself as well. It's funny we have like the same taste here. <laughs> is I like this because um, you can turn it into like a smaller hide or a slightly bigger bridge like they did. So it just depends on what you and your hands are like. You can use it, um, you can straighten it out and use it like a, a ladder for your hamster as well. So I like this because the hamster can chew on it safely. Um, you can scrub it down. I did wash it. So, um, and uh, looks good in your rustic hamster cage. Um, and uh, they have this little playground structure here. I'm not quite sure where they got, maybe they got from a hamster store. I think I've seen stuff like this before, but I'm, I'm not sure what the brand is, but the hamster likes climbing around on it. So I really like how you can see this is a nice big hamster cage. So they have the floor space for all of these toys. Let's see if we can do a little bit, yeah. Oh. Okay, it's okay, he's in the house, so he's protected. Um, so they have the floor space for all of these toys. I mean, and they can change it up. Um, so I. Uh, hamsters do sometimes get bored, so I've heard that it can help them um, if you sort of rearrange their furniture every week or so when you're cleaning the cage. Although another great thing about DIY bin cages is that the bigger the cage is, the less often you have to clean the entire bin cage. So if you have a huge, let's say like you have a huge, um, the trend a few years ago was to turn an IKEA Detolf glass shelving unit into a giant DIY hamster bin cage. But I, I heard that they've just, Ikea has discontinued the detail. But that used to be like the gold standard of the DIY um, hamster bin cage because it was so huge and inexpensive. I think like the detail is like, it's like $60 or something. So you have, you have like a huge, huge glass cage that looked amazing and it was cheap. So the thing about like really big bin cages is that the more bedding you have, the less often you have to clean the cage. So with the tiny little commercial, um, I'm just gonna put the lid on here before I forget. Um, the tiny little, I'm just make sure that the, 
just gonna make sure that the wheel has clearance for the Yes, yes it does. Good. Um, when you have the tiny commercial uh, hamster cages, there's so little space for bedding that you do have to wash them almost every week, I would say. Because um, sometimes with hamster cages, you can spot clean because hamsters may pee and poop in a certain corner. So you can just sort of scoop that out and just put like a little bit of fresh bedding there. But it's harder to do when you have the modular commercial hamster cages because they're just hard to um, to open. I mean, and then you have to come to take the hamster out and like, I, mean, I just find them a bit more difficult to spot clean than a bin cage. Because with the bin cage, there's just more surface area for them to pee and poop on. So <laughs> generally, the um, they don't get as smelly as the smaller commercial cages. So your substrate will last longer because um, you can spot clean, like you can clean out the corners and you won't have to do a big cage clean of the entire cage for several weeks. I found that with um, my own hamsters that um, uh, they don't seem to like having their cage cleaned weekly. That seems to be a bit too frequently for them because hamsters like their home to smell like them. And if you clean their cages, then it's a clean cage and then they get a little freaked out because they think, oh, it doesn't smell like them anymore. And then they may go into overdrive producing more smell to mark their cage as like, no, this is my space now, this is my space. I'm gonna mark it with all my scents. And they'll actually, their cage will actually smell stronger of hamster the first few days after you wash the cage. So I find roughly a schedule of maybe every other week tends to work for me. But again, it just depends on your hamster's cage size and um, I guess the health of the hamster if, if they're um, eliminating normally. But um, yeah, I mean, I just, um, <laughs> I just wanted to fangirl about this um, bin cage. I mean, I. Unfortunately, I don't actually see a lot of bin cages, although I think that it's really um, much more practical than um, the commercial hamster cages that I mentioned. Oftentimes, and I don't know if this is a Montreal thing because a lot of the pet stores are smaller, so the inventory is a lot smaller, but it can be very difficult to walk into a pet store here and find everything that you want. It's much, um, I feel like it's much smarter to just do research first on what you want and then check around to see either what pet stores have them, ask your pet store to order the supplies for them because oftentimes the pet stores will be able to, if they don't have it on hand, they can order um, supplies for you if you want it or you can um, make your own cage. But um, I really, don't recommend, unless you have some super fantastic pet store that you go to with incredibly knowledgeable, experienced staff who can guide you. But I really um, don't recommend just going into a pet store and trusting them to lead you along by the hand and actually have you buy um, species appropriate items for your hamster. Particularly with hamsters, I find that if you're going to a pet store, oftentimes the pet store will recommend what the pet store has. And it's not necessarily what is in the best interest of the hamster. It's just what the pet store is selling. The pet store employees aren't necessarily going to say, oh, we sell these cages, but actually you shouldn't buy these cages that we're selling. You should be buying these cages that we're not selling or making your own cage. No, they're gonna tell you buy these cages that we're selling, whether they're appropriately sized or not. And they're salesmen, so they're gonna be confident about convincing you that it's the right choice, but it's not necessarily the right choice. Now again, there are a couple of commercial hamster cages out there which are um, considered humanely sized for hamster. Preview does make one. Um, uh, it's got like bars on it and it kind of looks like a small guinea pig cage actually, but it's 
smaller. I mean, you also want to make sure if you have cages with bars that the bars are appropriately sized. So that is one cage that I've seen hamster owners have um, when they want to buy a commercial hamster cage that's appropriately sized. I think there's another one, but uh, it's slipping off the top of my head. That one, the other one I'm thinking of, it's, it's just came out and it's plastic, but I'm not quite sure if it's actually um, appropriately sized or if it's just slightly bigger than what is normally found. But anyway, um, <laughs> this, this video was like very negative against commercial hamster cages, but um, it's just that personally, I've had not so great experience about just maintaining them, cleaning them, hamsters breaking out of them. Um, and uh, uh, just because a hamster cage looks cute doesn't necessarily mean that it's species appropriate and is designed with a hamster's comfort in mind. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend DIY bin cages or glass tanks that are appropriately sized for hamsters. It's just great because you can have a lot of fun designing them yourself. Um, and uh, it's a lot easier to uh, swap out toys with a DIY cage than with a um, a prefab commercial cage because oftentimes you can only use, there's only enough space for the toys that come with the cage. You can't put another, like a flying saucer in there or um, another house or whatever else you want. It's just the only things that the hamster cage comes with is, is what is it? So um, <laughs> I hope it comes across that I, I really, really like this bin cage and I really hope that um, Hamster owners who are looking into buying a hamster um, or who have hamsters or who are looking to upgrade their hamster's cage will consider doing um, due diligence and researching hamster needs for their environment and habitat and providing for them appropriately. Um, I really like this hamster cage. Um, so I'm really hoping that I see these clients again, <laughs> but I did, um, at, uh, they did give me permission to film this video and to feature their um, bin cage and their hamster. So um, hopefully this was helpful. <laughs> I mean, there's always more than one way to do uh, pet care, but um, this is a great way. And I definitely highly recommend um, DIY bin cages for hamsters. So thank you for watching. My name again is Rachel Weiser and I'm a professional pet sitter in Montreal. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, and comment below um, with um, if you have your own DIY.